My mandolin hero, my first mandolin hero, was a guy named James Rachel. He came from Tennessee. He lived in Indianapolis, Indiana. I went to visit him a couple of times. And I asked him about Big Joe Williams, who was, uh, when I was a kid, he uh, used to play around my hometown, Big Joe Williams. He was from Mississippi. He played a nine-string guitar. And uh, so that was two of my heroes. Big Joe was long gone. Yank was still around in 1996. I went to his house to visit with him. I heard that he was not feeling well, and I thought maybe he would die. I wanted to see him one more time. And he did, and I did. And while I was sitting there, we were playing the guitar and the mandolin. I said, hey, hey, Yang, did you know Big Joe? I knew that he did. He said, yeah, I knew Big Joe. I said, but Yang, why did he have the pie pan screwed to the side of his amplifier? Right. And Yang Rochelle looked at me. His eyes were deep with age and knowledge from a life in the blues. And he looked at me and he said, I don't know. <laughs> this is a song that Big Joe recorded in 1934 with Yank Rochelle playing the mandolin. It's a love song. like 23, 24, you know, like that, playing the guitar. I lived in Tennessee. I lived in Texas. You know. 
And uh, at one point, I did a little bit of arithmetic, mathematics. And uh, never my strong subject, I'll tell you that. But I did some mathematics, and I realized that there were some people in the world that weren't going to be there very long. People that were born in 1893, 1894. I'm getting to be 1975, 76. I said, they're not going to be around forever. Better go see them. And one of the people that I... visited was a guitar player who lived in a place called Perry, Tennessee, outside of Franklin, outside of Nashville, down there by Alabama. His name was Sam McGee. And he was the first guitar player to ever play on the Grand Old Opry. He started there in 1926. So he was, a, he was a guitar hero, not only to me, but to hillbillies all around the world. You've heard about country hospitality. I think you have it here in Sweden, you know, where you're, you're made welcome in simple country homes, you know. me audition before he would let me into his house. I had to play the guitar first, then he opened the door. Then he wouldn't let me leave. I stayed over there hours. I was, I was familiar with some of his recordings from the 1920s and the 30s. And uh, it got to be kind of late at night and I, uh, I kind of asked him, I said, Sam, would you Show me how to play railroad blues. And he said, I'd be much obliged. I 
gypsy in a fortune telling place. I remember the gypsy. She read my mind, honey, then she slept my mind. to play a song now in the uh, guitar workshop that I'm going to do as soon as I'm through here, or soon after I'm through here. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about is some of the chords that, uh, that I use that are uh, useful when you play the blues. There's uh, five of them. Right? Yeah. This one, this one, this one, this one, and that one. That's it. Those are the only chords I know, actually. But that'll be our little secret. Well, oh, no, you're filming this. <laughs> be on YouTube before you know. So, anyways, I was thinking about that earlier at the hotel um, while I was doing my laundry. Um, because uh, I am, I'm doing all my transportation myself. I have no roadie. I don't have a manager or any of those things. So guitar, mandolin, all my stuff, I have to carry it from the train station to the airport, to the where you get And you saw it has to be small. So uh, this tour will be a month long. I'm going to go back at the end of November. I'll go back to the United States. I'm going to be in Sweden and Denmark and Germany and Belgium and England and Netherlands. And then, I, then they let me go home. I can count my money when I get back. It won't take long. Um, <laughs> anyways, but uh, <clears throat> so I only I have uh, uh, three changes of clothes. Right? This is one of them. Pretty nice, don't you think? They are beautiful. How about the shoes? Very good. Uh, but so that means that I have to do my laundry. This is the romance of the musical life, touring life that nobody knows about. I have to do my laundry in the sink at the hotel. It's a silk shirt. They dry very fast. And uh, I'm not going to say anything bad about the hotels here. They're really nice. I'm staying at the Lawrenceburg Hotel right down here. Right? A nice hotel. But the sinks in Europe are very small. So you have to first wash your socks, then your shirt. right? Because you can't fit socks and a shirt in the sink at the same time. I was doing that. And uh, thinking about just how lucky I actually am. And it... on your shelf. I got wet clothes in a wash tub and my washboard's on your shelf. If I should change this morning, baby, then I might have to wash my clothes myself. Cloudy, baby, may I dry them by your fire?
said, you know, Steve James, I wouldn't mind it. But you might make my gas bill run too high. He said, that's all right, baby, the way you won't wash my clothes anymore. I just have to wash my clothes myself. Looks like I ain't got no way to dry them, though, so I, I just won't wash them. Get down in my knees. 